Hi, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the L.A. Fish Guy. As Scott Leaf and myself begin to experience much greater success with our coral reef tanks, and the corals inside those tanks continue to grow, we have to trim them back, or what the aquarium industry refers to as fragging corals. With that in mind, we decided to create a new spin-off series, which will be devoted to a 10-minute episode broke into three parts. The first part, general overviews of systems that hold coral frags. The second part, dealing with the lighting and some of the equipment involved in those frag tanks. And the third part, water chemistry of those frag tanks. And so, welcome to my new spin-off series, L.A. Frag Guys. and start the series off with my own tank. But first let me tell you, I'm not the king of coral frags. As a matter of fact, I'm learning just like the rest of you are. As the series progresses though, we'll have more involved and more experienced fraggers who will give you greater bits of information. And at the same time, we'll also have a feature referred to as 60 Seconds with Steve that'll have Steve Tyree, the godfather of SPS corals, giving us information as well. But for now, this is a starting point. This tank will serve for me as a place to keep coral frags that either I purchase from the coral wholesalers or the fish wholesalers and bring home and then distribute out to my uh, aquarium service customers. It may be a place where I get coral frags from other fraggers, bring them home, allow them to recuperate in this tank before I move them into my main display tank. And it may also be a place where I get coral frags from Scott, or together we get coral frags from other people put into the tank and then redistribute them from there. But for now, it's a starting point for me. It's a simple JBJ 45-gallon glass rimless tank. It has the filter built into its backside. It has a hang-on-the-back protein skimmer. It also has an Ecotech Vortec pump inside of it. And on top of it is an Ecotech Radeon light. Let's take a little bit closer look at the tank and the corals that I've collected so far. So as you can see, there's a number of corals in the tank. I'll start off first by the frag rack, which is just simply a two-level tiered rack uh, that I made out of black egg crate, uh, PVC pipe, uh, and the pipe itself originally was white, which has now been spray painted black. Um, so you see there's a number of different corals in there. There's uh, one large piece of live rock there in the back. I probably should have more, given it a, a, a greater uh, dynamic biological filter system. But for now, that was the only piece that I could find that I felt comfortable putting into the tank and not introducing a bunch of other stuff. Um, so, as you see, uh, there's a... a red Ganiopora there, or what's called a flower pot coral. It hasn't really opened up much. Uh, there's a couple of Blastomusas there. Uh, this one here I believe is referred to as a meteor shower. Uh, a couple of pieces of a Pocilla pora. A couple of closed brain coral frags. Um, those, I'm not exactly sure what they're called. I, I want to say they're in the Scolemia family. Uh, a couple of hammer corals. This one I never really did clearly get a chance to identify. It's kind of been struggling. It had a lot of polyps on it originally. Uh, down here on the bottom are what I'm going to call open brain corals. Uh, they could be trachylophilias. Um, the wholesaler refers to them as dent corals or dent open brain corals. Uh, a nice green one there. Uh, a beautiful red one with a green center. This one here has kind of an orange rim with a green interior. Uh, this one here is a purple rim with a, a red interior. Uh, this one here, struggling a little bit, um, is a combination of reds, uh, purple, uh, and I believe some green in there. Uh, unfortunately, this one here is really quite struggling along. Uh, up here on the back, a large piece of Pocillopora. Um, Meandra, a type of uh, brain coral, I believe. 
Um, there is a Montipra digitata there in the back. Uh, there's a scolemia, um, followed by another red scolemia, another uh, brain coral there. Uh, this one I kind of like. It's got really bright green polyps. Might also be Montipra digitata. Don't hold me to this. Uh, another piece of encrusting coral with green polyps. Uh, this one here I believe is referred to as Looney Tunes. Um, not sure about that one there. It's a staghorn or an acupora of some sorts. Another acupora. This one I like because it typically has a lot of... Um, I'm sorry, it's this one here that I like that has a lot of... Uh, uh, polyp uh, extension on there so it's kind of uh, fuzzy for lack of a better description. Uh, this one I'm not exactly sure of. Uh, that's Montipera capricornis. Uh, if I remember right, it uh, seems that the center of this tank here has a little bit of an issue, maybe the lighting just a little bit too strong because I had to move corals in and move corals out of that particular spot. Uh, this one here could also be a meteor shower. This is another piece of Capricornus. Um, these two here were in the center of the tank at one point. And I've had to pull them out and move them to the side. They seem to be doing a little bit better. So there might be just a little bit too much concentration of light uh, there in the center of the tank. Um, but those are the corals that I'm currently holding in the tank. Um, I'm quite pleased with them. A number of them are to go into uh, customers' tanks. And I think before I do that, I may move some of them uh, into my own tank. Um, so let's talk about the system here uh, in just a moment. In 60 seconds with Steve. Hello coral enthusiasts. The Acropore tenuous species has been imported into the United States since about the mid 1990s. Around 2014 to 2016 however we began to see some very colorful tenuouses. Some examples include the Walt Disney tenuous and the Homewrecker tenuous. The colorful tenuous craze, however, actually began years earlier with the original orange passion tenuous. This color morph featured bright orange polyps with blue turquoise branches. The first colorful tenuous we discuss in this series is the RR Ultimate Orange Passion. This color morph features red-orange polyps with exotic blue mouths. Branch coloration varies from blue to pink to green. Fresh-cut frags of this coral will tend to morph to green-colored branches. As the coral grows and encrust, the incredible ultimate passion pigmentation can eventually develop. We hope to cover many other tenuous color morphs in future episodes. Please visit my websites, corefarmersmarket.com and reeffarmers.com. That was 60 Seconds with Steve. So, your cool nano reef tank is doing great, but you've got an algae problem? Consider the drop from Santa Monica filtration. Seven sizes to easily fit into the filter compartment of most nano tanks. And just like their bigger cousins, the Hawk and the Surf, all use air bubbles and LED light technology to grow algae. Algae that consumes nutrients. And that algae replaces itself at no new cost to you. For more information on Santa Monica Filtration's drop, hog, and surf algae scrubbers, visit santa-monica.cc. As I mentioned, it's a rimless glass 45-gallon tank with a filter system built into the back side of the tank. The water exits the tank through these two uh, slotted uh, teeth here in the back of the aquarium. Uh, on this end of the tank, the first thing it runs into is a bag of activated carbon that helps remove colors and odors, and then underneath that is a filter pad that traps particles. Uh, in this chamber is an algae scrubber, referred to as the drop. I'll talk about that in just a little bit. And then in the center of the tank, there are two submersible water pumps that return the water into the tank. Over here at the far end of the tank, the water exits in a similar manner. In this particular case, it's drawn up by a, a small water pump that sends it into a CPR backpack protein skimmer. Uh, this is a little Venturi unit uh, that creates its own aeration. Uh, it fills up with air bubbles in there and then drives out organics uh, through the uh, box at the top of it. There's also a, a submersible heater in there for controlling um, the coolness. Uh, or make sure the tank doesn't get too um, cold. Um, 
Now, I had mentioned there was a uh, Ecotech uh, Vortec pump on the tank. Um, I had got this tank from a service customer and when I reset it back up, I'd made the mistake about not attaching the top of the uh, pump uh, or tethering it. Um, and what happened was um, I knocked off the pump, which fell down onto the ground, and that kind of caused a problem with the, um, the bearing in there. Uh, the people at Ecotech uh, were able to help me acquire a new motor side of it, uh, so I thank them very much for that. It now runs much, much quieter. Uh, this particular Vortec pump is down here. It's controller, um, and it's got a number of different settings. I, I do have a reef link for Ecotech, but I have to admit I'm a little bit technology challenged and have not been able to get it to work um, on my laptop. Uh, which at the same time would also control the lighting, which is an Ecotech Radeon lighting uh, system that is uh, on an arm uh, hanging or suspended over the top of the tank. Uh, the unique thing about this type of lighting is, as opposed to just white and blue LEDs, this has a number of different colored LEDs inside of it. Uh, those other colors help bring out certain colors within the corals and supposedly there's also some benefit by getting other spectrums of light down inside there. Uh, I would have to say the corals are performing relatively well under this light and it, uh, when it was a service customer's tank it also performed quite well and those corals did real, real good as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it as far as this tank is concerned. Um, as I mentioned, uh, there is calcium and alkalinity supplements that are put into the tank. Uh, there is the uh, Vortec uh, Radeon power source right there. Again, that is the controller for the um, um, Vortec pumps. And then there's also some uh, coral dip, which we'll get into at some other point in the series. And as I mentioned, the uh, calcium and alkalinity supplements. So uh, we'll take another short break and be right back. Hi, I'm Eric Cohen of Blue Life USA. Let me show you my product line. Clear FX Pro, filter media in a bag. Comes in three sizes for fresh water and salt water. New technology, new resins, removes phosphates, organics, and clarifies water. Safety Stop, quarantine treatment for fresh water and marine fish. Our Blue Vet RX product line consists of phosphate, aptasia, red cyano, and flatworm remedies. And our Watercolors Aquarium background comes in colors black and blue, available in four different sizes. Blue Life USA, aquarium products found in retail stores across the country. Or for more information, visit us at bluelifeusa.com. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. So this portion of the segment deals with water quality and ways of enhancing it that benefit the corals. What you're looking at are two 300 gallon each containers. Uh, the right one is 300 gallons of RODI water. The second one is 300 gallons of um, mixed salt water. Uh, I happen to use uh, red sea salt myself um, and so I make uh, 300 gallons of ocean water or in this case salt mix for my aquarium service customers. Part of the plumbing on this system which allows water to be transferred from one container to the other container as well as mixing in the other container also allows me to send whether it be RO water for top off 
or salt water over into my fish holding system as well as my invertebrate holding system but in addition there's another line there that runs up and across the ceiling that fills the um, 100 gallon container for my uh, Genesis Renew system uh, that's inside the house for the large reef tank and there's a line right here that comes down and runs into the top of the tank and so my method of controlling water quality is simply dilution via new salt water and so when I say dilution what I'm referring to is I can very easily turn the pump on over by those 300 gallon water containers and I've got plumbing routed here across the top of the garage and by opening up this valve here I can turn and bring in water into the system whether that be newly made up salt water for performing a water change or sending water such as RODI over here to take care of top-off situations. Uh, it'll, this allows me to easily siphon water out of the tank and easily replenish it. Uh, the other manner of controlling nutrients is with the uh, drop algae scrubber. So the drop algae scrubber's advantage in this particular case is the fact that it can drop right into this filter compartment. It's a rectangular box that stays submersed. It's connected to an air pump and so it creates bubbles inside there. What the bubbles are doing is moving uh, water through the system so that it's exposed to all of the, uh, as much nutrients as possible. You can see here that there's a algae that grows inside here and it's this algae that sucks up nutrients out of the system. Uh, it's one of the ways that I help control water quality beyond just simple dilution. Uh, this algae here has drawn up nutrients, which is what plants use to um, grow. And the algae scrubber works off that basic principle. Um, you can clean this unit out weekly, every two weeks, depending upon how long you have the light on. Um, this is probably the first time in a couple weeks uh, that I've actually cleaned it out myself. Um, relatively easy. It's got two red LED lights that are on a timer, uh, which are typically out of phase with what the uh, lights in the aquarium are. Uh, it stays submersed here in this rear compartment um, and it's hooked up to a large air pump that I have over running the uh, protein skimmer as well as uh, other components on the other fish holding and invertebrate systems. And so my approach to controlling water chemistry is basically the solution to pollution is dilution. What I mean by that is I can easily perform water changes whether they be frequent or not, large or small, by turning that pump on over there and introducing new water into the system and at the same time siphoning out the old water. I may need to supplement calcium and alkalinity though, but that's easily done. So I invite you to come on back for future episodes of LA Frag Guys as we explore other fraggers and other methods. And if I may, steal a line from the LA Fish Guys episode Keep moving forward.